Toby, you want to say hi? No? Not in the mood? Pumpkin, what about you? You want to say hi? Hey, Pumpkin. How you doing, sweetie? You looking good, Pumpkin. Looking, looking so pretty. Hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here. How's everybody doing? You're doing well. I'm great. Just, you know, normal, everyday morning routine stuff. Sitting on the ground, feeding the tortoise. Colby is making some very interesting gurgly sounds. I don't always feed Colby the tortoise. That's that's Colby. There he is. Don't always feed by hand. Try to do it a few times a week just for taming purposes. Colby always hasn't been the most not an aggressive tortoise by any means. Just a little bit more shy and timid than a lot of sulcatas. Like just now getting him used to being pet. It's not ever been a fan of that, which is a shame because I would imagine it would probably feel nice when you have a shell to be able to have people come around and give you some scratches and some love. So, making big progress here. Enjoy the rest of your lettuce, Colby. We got things to do. Did you, what did you roll around in? We just came in from outdoors. That's nice. Gonna need a vacuum again. Forecast is pretty wonky coming up here, so I don't, I don't really know what's going on this week. We just gonna go outside and see what needs to be done and get some stuff done. Hopefully that sounds like fun. Hey, Tobes. How you doing, Toby? You wanna come up? You know what you gotta do. You gotta come over here. I can't help you from over there. I'm sitting right here. You have to sit over, come on, come over here. We have a whole process. It's not that easy getting the old man up here, but he loves being up here so much. You do not, don't you dare shake off over here. Don't do it. Gotta think about it. It's not quite far enough out. Doesn't know what to do. Is he gonna wait for it to go over to him? Is it gonna float to you or you gonna jump in? What are you gonna do? You always think he's gonna wait for it. That's surprising. Wait, Toby, it's okay. Toby, come back. Toby. Toby, I thought we were gonna have a snuggle party, Toby. Oh, he just straight up abandoned me out of nowhere. I just, what was that? 15 seconds I wasn't giving him attention and now I don't exist? That's nice, Toby. And Turbo decided he doesn't want to jump for the ball. That's fine. They don't, they can do whatever they want. Hey, what's up, garden friends? Did I already do that? I have no idea. Jeff here, how's everybody doing? If you're doing well, I'm great. I'm trying to remind myself not to rock too much when I have the camera in my hands. Don't want to make anybody dizzy. So, no plan this week other than I just, I need to get stuff done. All things that I think are going to be fun, hopefully, ideal. Are we going to do the face cam thing? The hair's not looking good today. She just, you're going to have to deal with it. I'm going to wait for things to warm up some more. And is it rude that I have my sunglasses on? Sorry, there's my eyes. It's sunny. I want my glasses on. Right now, it's going to warm up a little bit, hang out with the dog, and start doing some stuff. He's being a weirdo about this pool. I don't get it. The water's like 94 degrees. Is it too hot for you in there, Turbo? Probably not. I mentioned that it got really cold. Didn't even talk about damage. I don't think there is any. So that's why I didn't mention anything about it. It looks like everything's good. I'm guessing that that cold was very brief since it warmed back up so, so, so quickly. I don't get it, guess he's not in the mood to swim. That's fine. Seems like he's in a good mood at least. Yeah, good boy. Thanks for the ball. That's just what I needed. Wet dog toy, right in my lap. I also just realized that if I want to plant things, that the first thing I should really be doing is pulling the mulch. I have mulch piles all over the place. It's time to get those flattened out and then spread around the back of that berm. I don't like doing that. It's not a fun job. Now he jumps in. So that means I need to gas up the gorilla cart. By gas up the gorilla cart, I mean probably put air in its tires, grab a shovel and start pulling mulch and get that Eureka pump out. I can't, I'm gonna show you here in just a minute. The Eureka pump, it's, it's taking up some space. Right when I was about to get up, just 110 pounds of wet dog right on my leg. Do you make yourself comfortable, Turbo? Yeah, I don't blame you. It's nice up here. It's nice. Hey, the glider. I got the paint, talked about that in the last video so that I could touch up the canopy up there because it's, you know, looking great. But I found another one that I like a lot better. It's beige, which, you know, beige, I think is the definition of boring, but also neutral. And it has a hard top on it. I'm like, well, that seems cool, fancy with a hard top and the whole thing reclines into a bed. That would be great. So I've always wanted a hammock, but don't have anywhere to put a hammock that I can think of where it wouldn't look ridiculous. So that, I'll try the paint out just so that we can play with it and see how it works. But I think that the glider is probably gonna be going in a couple weeks. I don't know for sure, but I think it will be. I hope it will be, because I really like the other ones. You're gonna get me all wet and have a bath on my lap? I feel like that's kind of rude, making yourself comfortable. That's enough chatting. There's so many things, I 
so bad about remembering not to do the gliding while I'm here. So many things that I want to walk around and talk about, just ideas that are spilling out of my head. But the, what, Saturday? The end of the month, I think. Close enough to it that it's going to be garden tour time, so I have to save all that. And get some work done so that you can do some other things. But I have, there's some things I want to do that I'm kind of excited about. And need to keep an eye on the sales on the plants because I think it might be time to go get some arbs. Maybe. Have to wait and see. That might have to wait. I don't want to put too much on my plate. Don't want to talk up too much of a game for what I can get done. Because having a vlog done and out by Wednesday instead of Saturday, that's, that's a lot. Because usually these things span out over a few days. But if we're just going to pull some mulch and plant, uh, y'all don't need to listen to any of this. We'll get to doing some fun stuff now. Yep, there it is. Giant palm tree. I left it on the dolly. I didn't see a reason. Why would I take it off the cart when it was only for 48 hours? Standing this thing up in here, not easy. Very difficult because it hits the light fixtures and that, well, that's it. It hits the light fixtures. It takes a long time to get it up and down. So I figured I'd just leave it down here. I have to get it back out. Probably the most difficult plant to move out. That or no. Eh. Actually, that might have to go to the tie just because it's so wide. It can be difficult to get outside. Pika palm definitely comes in second place, if not first. Oh, well, that wasn't too bad. I was thinking I'd put the door up and it was going to pull the fronds. I guess that was just because when I tried to move it out, it I had a lot of trouble getting it past the door, but that's probably because it was already up above the door. The cart, I think, should just be able to give this a scoot. Yeah, that's going to take two hands. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, that wasn't too bad. Shouldn't have been. It was on the cart the whole time. One of the wheels kept jamming up. Don't know what that was about. I also realized this is probably a good time to come in and do some pruning on this thing just because, you know, I can reach it for a change when this is upright. Can't get to the stuff up top without either lying it down on its side or uh, using a step stool. I'm just going in and cutting off anything that's like really, really, really brown, which, well, that wasn't that brown. Must have been one of the fronds that was behind it. Generally have to do this every single spring and every single fall. It gets a very, very, very heavy prune, which I don't mind doing. It opens the canopy up, allows for more airflow on the inside, which, help, uh, which helps a lot because there's always some pests in here from the winter time and mealybugs, that is. And I see some on here now. It's been sprayed a few times, but it looks like it could use another. That's another benefit to getting it down on its side where I can actually see the top of it and see what's going on because all the critters accumulate up in here. See them in there? So that's good. I can hit that with some neem and get it sprayed. Can I reach this one? Can I get it? Barely? Yes, I think. Oh, okay, well. Got a couple, that's all right. Should I take this one too? No, there's still some green in there. Okay, and who's next? I already, the Eureka Palm's back there. Do you like the terrifying Easter mask that's sitting there? Should probably do something else with that, shouldn't I? And have a look at what's out there when I get them out there. I'm thinking that the Matophyllum, that should be fine to go out. The Dracaena, I don't know. I'd like to get it outside because it's just, it's covered in cobwebs and it's dirty back here. I've had trouble getting the water flow to like blast this thing off during the winter time, but it's just not warm yet and the reflexes do like warmth. So I, don't, I guess I'll wait. Same thing with the Malaysian orchids up here. Lots of mealybug up there on some of those plants. Good to know all those predators have been doing their job, except not at all. The hibiscus, uh, maybe. Yeah, sure. Why not? It's fine. It's a hibiscus. If it dies back some, no big deal. Over there on the shelves, the banana, there's some hibiscus over there. There are a bunch of little plants over there that I can probably move out. The folks on the bigger shelf for right now get the somatophyllum out and the pensamons. They got thirsty. My gosh, they're only in here for two days. They're going to be happy to get back out. Oh, dang it. Just about had the nicest close up. Real sharp picture of a, there was a dragonfly on there, which was exciting, but it's gone now. Okay, here's what I brought out. The busy. Thematophyllum bipinadifidum, thematophyllum bipinadifidum lickety split, the Dracaena reflexa, and well, the Eureka and the Croton, y'all already know about that, and the Musa ecumenita, I think, yes, well, obviously, ecumenita, I 
think, I can't remember, it's Little Prince or True, Little Prince. That's this one, Nana. They got some of the annuals brought back out that were inside. I know I have my little mess pile here. That's where I grab my pots and my fertilizers and things. I'm doing work over here. Those are back out. Everything needs a good water and then a spray because there are some critters running around on everything. And I think that's where I should stop with moving plants out. I want to bring out more. It's hard for me to stop, but we could still have another cold snap. And the more I bring out, the more I got to move back in that there's not shade to harden the plants off in yet. Like the Eureka, I don't care. It grows so fast, it'll, yeah, it's fronds will burn up, whatever. I cut them off and it pushes out new ones and then boom, done. Takes like three weeks and the plant's ready to be in full sun because it just pushes out new growth. Do it the other way, where you slowly bring it into the sun, takes like two months and then it usually still scorches. That plant just doesn't move well from light to shade, shade to light, you know what I'm saying. I wanna keep watching the forecast. I brought everything out that I'm think can handle a very light frost should there be an unexpected cold. Oh, and the bird of paradise is out here too. She need to do some pruning on some of its flowers are done doing their things. I'm going to give everything a nice water, give them a spray, and then I'm gonna move everything out from the kitchen, all the flowering plants, because well, I'm about to spray. I wanna use the sprays around the flowering plants. So if that's why not everything's out here yet, but it doesn't really need to be. Happy with this, it's a mess, but that's just kind of the nature of the beast. Need to keep things together so that I can treat and clean and spray generally for a week or two before I put them where I want them throughout the rest of the season. Just easier that way. And that way, if there's some kind of pest or something that I've missed, it's not going to be moved to the other side of the yard and cause a problem over there. I like to just keep it all together, nice and tidy. Well, I don't know about tidy, but you know what I mean. Contain any issues that might be out here. You have a good swim? think so. He's been in and out of there a lot. Okay, so here's where I am, or what I've been doing. You know where I am. You, you can see it, right? I've been pulling mulch. Then about six or seven loads loaded up in there. Then I'm taking them, dumping them out onto the back of that berm where things need to be built up. Unearthing the bananas. I, yeah, it looks like I could probably get in and get some more out of some of these spots. I haven't touched this area yet because it just... I, I don't want to. It wouldn't be more tedious, and it's not what I need to do right now for the sake of YouTube. There are other things that need to be done. Like clearing out the area where other things are going to be going, hopefully sooner than later. Got all that mulch out. The only spot that is left over here where the gingers are. So I'm going to get that pulled out, pulled back, load into the gorilla cart, and spread out over there, and then probably cut back in the morning and start planting some impatience. Having a little trouble getting motive. <laughs> Turbo, what are you doing? Turbo's been an absolute snuggle monster this morning. Sit down here just to, you know, refresh, wake up. Got the carts loaded up with impatience over there. Got some stuff laid out to get to planting. And he hopped up here and he just laid down, not in my lap, but with his head in my lap and passed out cold. Just woke up. That's good. I was doing, you know, your pets ever snuggle up with you and then you feel bad. The idea of waking up and having to go do something else, that's what just happened. And it made me very sleepy. You did that, Turbo. He was so warm and soft, petting him and he was snoozing, snoring. Need to get my energy back up. Okay, impatience. Got a cart full, gorilla carts full, augers down there think we're ready to go. I don't think I need anything else. I'll probably throw some compost in the holes and what not when I get down there, but usually play that by ear as I get going. He's such a good boy. What a sweetheart. <laughs> Cart's loaded up, ready to go. Turbo's cooling off. Augers, ready to go. Turbo's up there having, well, he's having a pee. He was about to play with his friend. Dude's over there, the neighbor's dog. It's usually cute when they play. I'm thinking... I'm wondering if I should take them further this year than I did. Last year I did a row of two. Like I did a row on top and a row on bottom. That was good, but I think I could do more. The problem is I'm also doing this about three or four weeks earlier than I did it last year. And the gingers haven't come up yet over here. So I don't know, a little bit of trouble remembering where they are. They're in here somewhere. My cam is, ugh, the camera's upside down. Hopefully that flips around when I edit it. Why was it upside down? I have no idea. I know at least a couple of the gingers are alive because yesterday when I was pulling the mulch up, I cut a couple of them. Lots of gnats over here too. Yeah, like over here, well, there's part of one that I cut. That's a ginger, right? Smells like ginger. I don't remember where they are. I want to say that they're like 
here, probably? Somewhere in this zone, something like that. This would be a lot easier if I knew where they were. I don't want to go in with the auger and start tearing them up. I really just don't remember. What's all this? Those are roots from something, probably from the arbs. I don't know what to do here. Hostas are coming up. That's that's neither here nor there. Save all that for the garden tour. Oh, I'm gonna start popping holes and just seeing what feels right. Figure out the color scheme that I'm gonna work with here. That could be a problem. Don't know if you could hear it. This thing's already dying. Listen to this. I put it in and just... I've only gotten like 85 holes dug so far. Not right here. It's like 30 or 40 something over here. If I started on this berm from right here and working my way down. I'm not even halfway down. This thing's starting to die. That's a third of the holes. I have 300 impatience. They're, I, mean, I guess they're not all going back here, but still. I need more juice than that. Luckily, planned ahead and I have another battery in the charger, but if that one dies right away, then, well, I, I guess this, that'll be it. Or I could, you know, dig the holes by hand like people used to do. I also forgot I have colladium bulbs here. I have several dozen of them. Those are just going to be plopped in along the back lines of everything. I should probably go grab some compost too. I want to bring this down further, like into this area right here where I had this pot sitting, but I can't do that because the irrigation company is going to be coming out here in a few weeks and a lot of this area right here and on the other side has to be dug up because there's this, what well, you see it, that line right there that got ripped out of the ground last year and that's the line that goes from this side of the yard to that side underneath this walkway. I don't want to plant anything over there just yet because it's just going to get destroyed. Did you find a stick? Thank you for bringing that to me. What a nice stick. Go get it. I also didn't pull as much of the pedicits out as I have in years past. The impatience don't, well, years past, last year. It's the only other time I've done this. The impatience didn't grow very much over here last year. It was very shady, so I was apprehensive about pulling too many of those up. I figured I'd just maybe let them intermingle and see what happens. And I left this front line right here, and I think last year I took it back so that there maybe weren't any in the front. I don't know. I just, I don't want to tear them up when I don't know what's happening with this berm here, right? Because clearly, like, this isn't going to work, right? have to figure something else out there. So I want to, hmm. Yeah, just kind of going with the flow, having fun with it. Gotta say, pretty disappointed with the battery life on this driver here. Do you guys have any opinions on the Ryobi drivers? Let me know, because I'm a big fan of Ryobi products. I've been using several of them. I just got a Ryobi jigsaw, and I love it. have some multi-tools. The other things I have are, like, tire inflators and battery-operated fans. But as far as things like a drill goes, I'm curious, because I think I'd like to make the switch. I like the battery compatibility with the, you know, this is a Ryobi One Plus, so I already have, like, four batteries, so I just need to buy the drill which isn't that expensive. I remember I had one, I think when I was like, God, probably my early 20s, Ryobi was brand new, and I really liked it. I don't know what happened to it. I don't know if it broke or what the deal was, but I remember really liking it. Don't know what happened to it, though. These, the DeWalt's, though, I've come to start to think that DeWalt might be overhyped. I don't know. I mean, they used to be great, but I've had to buy like three of these in the last probably seven or eight years, and that's that's not how their products used to be at all. It's pretty disappointing. Some of the other Ryobi stuff I have inside have never had to replace. And I've only had them for like four or five years, but still, that there's still a comparison to be drawn there. Yeah, let me know your thoughts. If you've used the Ryobi OnePlus drills, I'm gonna get back to I get. I need to stop talking. There's so much to do over here. All right, time to get planting, finally. I don't know why I said finally. This really didn't take very long. I used an auger. Don't need to explain. Y'all just saw that. So when I'm planting up a mass of annuals and when I'm working with several colors, I usually like to have a primary, not primary color as in like red, yellow, blue, but a uh, main color. And for this year, I'm going with this bubblegum pink. The reason I mention this is because usually when I'm working with a lot of colors, it can start to boggle my mind when I start to try and think of a pattern to go pink, white, orange, lilac, red, and so forth to try and establish that pattern. So instead, what I do is first go through with my anchor color. That's what I'll call it. The main color. Fill in all my holes with those first because it's the most important. It's the one that I want to use the most of. And then fill in the gaps with the other colors to complement. This helps me avoid some of the brain scrambles that come up with trying to make sure that I have some kind of 
pattern established with everything. And I don't lay them out in any particular order either. But the other reason I like doing it this way is because when I'm just working with the one color that I want to be the main color, it's easier to see where there are gaps. So like I can see right here, there's a big distance right there. So I should toss another one in this general vicinity right there. It can be harder for those things to stand out when you're working with all kinds of colors at one time. Yeah, there we are, starting with this bubblegum pink. Work my way through all the way around and start filling them in. Filling them in with the other colors, that is. And probably, I'll put some, I'll be back. We'll talk more about it. Done. It took a minute. There are a lot of roots in there, which I don't really understand how, because I just did this last year, but there they were as I was going. Took a while to get through all the roots. I have them mostly filled, and I can see there are some that I need to do a better job on. You have to water them in and then let the stuff run around them and usually go in and backfill one more time. But that's easy enough to do, except for some reason I'm not getting any water pressure. Like it's just a dribble coming out of the hose and I can't find a kink anywhere. Don't know what that's about. Utility people might be doing something out in the street. I don't know. That happens sometimes. Gonna be kind of hard to tell what this is gonna look like. Is there just now planted, right? It's going to take some time to fill up, but once these fill out, I'm going to like this. One thing I did differently this year than any other year, when I say any other year, I'm referring to when I used to plant these out front and film that. I didn't put any white in here. I have a couple of eight packs of the white, but decided not to. I wanted to stick with the warm tones and figure that I can plop the white and patience into some planters or something of the sort if I want something to reflect light out here at nighttime. That's, oh, what's going on here? Um, you good? What's your problem? These are all falling apart. You need to take those down, scrub them, and replace some of them. Good to know. Didn't go too heavy with them over on that side. And then, I think y'all already saw all that, right? I did. I wanted to go higher, but I need to wait for those gingers to come up, because I don't remember where they are, and I don't want to be tearing into them. This is good. It's a start. I do still have a few left. I didn't buy too many. A lot of these are going in my front yard, so that's why there are so many more. And I have more that I want to plant out here in the back too, but need to get that space prepared. Primarily stuck with the orange, that bubblegum pink, and then this more of a magenta-y tone. I didn't use very many of these magenta-y ones. I wanted them to only be like one every few feet, just as an accent to have a little bit of a darker tone and with that orange and the pink. I think those look great when they grow in. Normally when I do a planting like this, I go through and I backfill with compost and sand and probably Osmocote, earthworm casting, sea kelp. I try and mix up a blend that's going to make the soil nice and rich for the annuals, but I didn't feel like doing all that this year just because it takes a long time to mix all that stuff together. The soil's looking nice and dark. And I grabbed this instead of using biotone or plant tone or garden tone. It's just the Rosenbloom from miracle Grow. Obviously going to be higher on the phosphate because it wants to promote flowering, which is fine for the impatience. We don't really need it because they're impatient, so it's not going to hurt them. It's the ingredients that intrigued me more than anything else. You got the kelp, castings, feather meal, bone meal. I like the analysis and the breakdown of everything that's in here. Figure what I'm getting with this is I'm getting fertilizer plus all that good stuff to help enrich the soil and help promote good root growth. I don't have to go through with the biotone and then the osmocote and then the compost. I think this should be sufficient mixed in with the ground soil. I don't know why it wouldn't be. The just regular miracle Grow Organics slow release, pretty much the same thing, but more balanced out. I used this specifically last year on some of my hibiscus and they did great. So I thought, well, why not put them in here? Didn't go too heavy because that phosphate is higher than it needs to be, but it's enough to help just liven the soil up. That was the whole point, just trying to liven the soil up without having to get out like five different products and mix things together. This is way easier. Okay, and then all that's left, which I'm not going to be doing in this video, is to handle this area, an area that's always been hidden by the glider, the glider that's not over here anymore. I'm gonna come in, pull up those pedicets, probably stick some annuals in the ground, just make it nicer because I'm probably going to be putting a seating set right here so I want it to I want it to look nice obviously I'm holding off because I need to make sure that the mimosa tree is alive it's normally budding by now and it's not looking good but we had a heck of a cool down in April and it takes pretty consistently warm temperatures for a few weeks to get them going there have been years where it didn't bud out until like mid to yeah, mid-May. Look at that cloud. What's he doing? It's just hanging over there like it's waiting for someone to write something in the middle of it. It's like the house is thinking something. There should be a thought up there. Sorry, easily distracted. That's it. That's what's going on. Pretty much it. 
time to unwind. <laughs> it's a long day. I know you wouldn't think that just blending some impatience would be that much work, but it is. It takes a long time. There's just a lot of steps involved with the different colors. I could probably do it a more efficient way, but I like the way it comes out, the way I've been doing it, so I'm not trying to change anything. It's partially because you know, I had to clear the area and then get the holes dug and then change out batteries and then come back with supplements the miracle grow for the soil start with one color work your way down on each end and go through with another color and then another color then i added more of the miracle grow and then got to go through it and backfill each section all in all got about 208 of the impatience planted i planted some more since the last thing you just saw they're down there it's you'll, you'll see them during the garden tour i'm done <laughs> my legs are spent between leg workouts yesterday and then Everything I just did over there, I'm not moving. Just a lot of up and down. I would much rather plant a hedge of like 20 large plants than do all those little tedious ones. Actually, that's not true. They're both fun. They're just wearing and it's getting late. So I'm sleepy anyways. You could probably hear in the last clip. So I did, I don't know if you can see it. I did end up cutting a limb out of the mimosa tree. There it is along the fence right there. I was knocking on it. It was hollow cut it out, and then I went through and uh, I cleared out a bunch of space and moved some things. I, I planted more impatience. You get it. Big project. That's, I know, like I said, doesn't really seem like a huge project, but it's a big one to check off the list, I should say, because it's one that has a huge impact on the yard. It makes a tremendous difference from behind, you can't see, but behind that hydrangea right there, all the way down, then across this entire berm, and now wrapping up to this wall. It's just a rainbow of color. Cannot wait for this to start growing and get to see what they look like. Everything else is just good to have done. Stuff needs to be done. Pull the mulch back, did some tidying, a whole bunch of pruning, and that's where things end. I'm tired. Still have plenty of work to do over here. I don't know if I'm going to do it before the garden door or just let it be one of those tours. I'm like, hey, look, there's a mess. Don't worry about it. Only because more and more plants are going to start rolling in here and I can't move things that are acclimating to the sun. They have to stay over there and acclimate to the sun. You know what I mean? So... It's fine. It's only for a few weeks. That's just kind of the nature of, well, usually April this year. It's going to be the nature of May, having things in odd places. But hey, thanks for hanging out. Hope everybody's doing well. Comment down below. Say hi. What's going on in your gardens? Hopefully fun things. Isn't he just the sweetest? I love this dog so much. Such an angel. Yeah, you too, Turbo. As you grumble at absolutely nothing. A twig, like a twig snapped in the background. Probably a squirrel jumping in a tree and he starts growling. What? What are you going to do? What would you do if there was something there you didn't like? You'd run and you'd hide by me. Talk's a tough game, but he's a big scaredy cat. With animals, that is. With people, with humans, he's always happy to see him. All right, hope everybody's doing well, having a great day and a great life, and everything's just going absolutely beautifully for you. And of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. See, I really don't want to get up to change camera angles. Bye-bye.